All right, so we're going to be finding all of the zeros for this polynomial, and we're going to rewrite the equations in factored form. You can use your graphing calculator to help check your answer. We're not going to do that during class, but you can do that at home if you'd like or on your own time. Um, so the first, what? Are you recording? Yeah, now I am. <laughs> the first thing that we're going to do is look at the information given. Factors. We're given two factors. And then we're going to look at the degree here, degree of four. How many factors should we have? Four factors, so we need to find two more. And um, remember what the what a factor is. A factor is just something that uh, multiplies by something else to give you that answer. Like um, two is a factor of uh, seventy-eight. Make a factor true. Two would be a factor. So if I wanted to know the rest of the factors of seventy-eight, I'd divide two out. So that's what we're going to do. Since I want to know the rest of the factors, I'm going to divide each of these factors out. So we're going to first divide x minus two. Out. So I'm going to set x minus 2 equal to 0. What goes in? Oh, oh wait. Do we need do we need to use um, long division or can we use synthetic? We can. can use synthetic because this is to the first power and we have a coefficient of 1. So we can use synthetic. If I can, I'm going to do it because it's easier. So we will be putting what number in the little box? 2. two. two. Okay. I'm going to go through it fast. You guys do it as well. When you do synthetic division, because the direction set x minus 2 is a factor, you should get 0 as the remainder. If you get any other remainder, you've done something wrong because this is a factor. It should go in evenly, no remainder. Let's see. Now I have a cubic equation left over, but I'm not going to write it like with x with yet. Because I know that another factor is x plus 3. So I know that I know another 0 is x equals negative 3. I'm going to now divide that out of the previous quotient. So what I like to do is I like to get rid of that remainder. I don't need the remainder anymore. And draw a new box just off of the old equation, or the, like the quotient we just got. And then synthetic division again. Again, you should get 0 as the remainder if you've done it correctly. Once we have taken out 2, we now have a quadratic left. Anytime you have a quadratic, you can finish this by factoring, complete the square, uh, quadratic formula. Once you have a quadratic left, you have enough information to solve for the rest of the factors or zeros. So why don't you try factoring first, see if it's factorable. If you can factor it. zeros as negative 3, negative 3 halves, negative 1 and 2. 
And then the directions also um, say write it uh, in the factored form, write the original equation in factored form. So we'll have f of x equals There should be four linear factors because the degree is four. Questions? So that's what you're going to be doing for your assignment, for most of your assignments. All right, now we just have just uh, different scenarios. So this next one, I'm giving you x equals negative 1. That is a 0. So the last one I gave you factors. Now I'm going to give you a 0. We're going to find the same information. So if we have a 0, we can write that as a factor by adding the 1 and setting it equal to 0. Now it's a factor. Can I use synthetic division for that one? Now, when you do synthetic division if, or long division, if there's any terms that are missing, you have to put in a zero. And for this one, the term that is missing is the constant term. And yes, you have to put it in there. You have to have that constant term in there. We use synthetic division and we get a remainder of zero. That tells us we did it right because we need a remainder of zero. Now I don't know anything else. I know the degree is four, so I should have three more fat, um, three more um, zeros and three factors other than the first one. And when I take out one power, this should be cubic. But they haven't given me any more information. There must be there must be a reason. So I'm going to write this as um, the equation now. Is it factorable? <coughs> what do we do to factor that? Yeah, it's a GCF. So, it's a GCF. so there's one of our um, factors right there. And then I'll try to factor what's left over. Terms in it, but that's just because it has that um, irrational 
turn that square root of 5 that you can't add with a negative 2 or subtract. You can't combine them. That's why I don't return. But that's okay. It's still a linear vector. Now, in Algebra 2, you should have learned that any time you have an irrational 0, it's never by itself. It always has a pair with it. Does anybody know what that other pair that friend is that I'm going to tell you about? Well, I'm going to look up here. I'm not going to look down. I'm going to look at the one up here. So the x equals... 2 minus radical 5. Um, does anybody remember what those two things together are called? Conjugates, yeah. You need a conjugate. So they're conjugates. Um, one is plus and one is minus, and they're really important. Um, you can never have a square root of 5 by itself. You will always have its conjugate with it. It's the same thing with imaginary as well. We're not doing imaginary today, though. So now I'm going to set that one equal to 0, and I'll have a second factor, x minus 2 plus radical 5 equals 0. That'll be my second factor. How many factors do I need? Three. You try to do synthetic division with multiple terms like this, it is a pain. I would highly not suggest it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a better way of finding the third factor in the third zero. What you're going to do is you're going to multiply these together. All right? And you learned how to do this last year. You just use the distributive property to stay organized. And I'm going to color coordinate each of these so you can see. I'm going to do x times x, so x squared, is x times minus 2, times 2x, x times plus radical 5, so plus x radical 5. And I will distribute negative 2 to each term. Minus 2x. And I'm choosing to put the terms underneath each other that will eventually add up, save me some time in the long run. Negative 2, that's going to be minus 2 radical 5. I'll change my color again. I'm going to distribute the minus radical 5. So I'll have minus x radical 5. And then I'll have plus 2 radical 5. And then radical 5 times negative radical 5 is minus 5. Now we have nine terms. We need to collect our like terms. And because we multiplied conjugates, all of the square roots should cancel. That was the whole point of us multiplying them together, so now we don't have square roots anymore. We don't have irrational numbers. We've got x squared minus 4x minus 1. And you combine all your like terms. You combine all our like terms. Cancel out all the radicals. This is the two of those factors multiplied together. We need to find the third factor. If we take the original question, we divide it by this quotient or by this product, we will get the third factor. So how can I divide by x squared? Long division. So we will do long division for this one. Okay, I don't <laughs> See what's happening? Everybody see that? Go back and watch that video. It's interesting. Okay. All right, what's our first step of low division? Divide. Okay, remember, if you do not remember how to divide x squared into x cubed, you can always just go write them on top of each other. x cubed divided by x squared. What does that give you? X. x. So we divide. Then we multiply. We have to distribute this when you multiply. You have to distribute it. So we're going to get three terms when we multiply. x to the third minus 4x squared minus 1x. Then we subtract, which you got to subtract all the terms. 
get negative 3x squared plus 12x. Then we bring it on down and bring it on down. Then what do you do? Divide. Repeat the process. Divide x squared into negative 3x squared. Minus 3. Multiply. Distribute that. Subtract. And if you've done this correctly, you should have a remainder of zero because that was the whole thing is we're getting remainder of zero. They go in evenly. What well, if you don't get a remainder of zero? You make, you make some sort of mistake. So our zero are um, this one, I'm going to set it equal to zero and I'll get three. And then the other two are two plus or minus, nope, yes, radical plus. So those are our zeros. And then the factored form, do you see how this one has like an equal zero in the original question? Okay. I'm just going to leave however it was in the original question, so it's going to not be an f of x one, it's going to say equal zero at the end. So we'll have x minus three. And then we'll have x minus 2 minus radical 5 and x minus 2 plus radical 5 equals 0. You can combine zeros to plus or minus. You cannot combine uh, factors. Okay? So those, you have to have three separate factors. For the only time that you would not have three separate factors is like one of them was squared or something. Okay. All right, the last one is not written on your paper. You just can write it on the back. But I had, after my first period, I was like, oh, I got to get over this example because they were having trouble and uh, make sure that we all know how to do this kind. Because there's one in your homework. Did I give you a factor or did I give you a zero? I gave you a zero. So let's find the factor. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. Is that the factor? No. Because we don't have fraction factors. So what do we do to change it so it's not a fraction factor anymore? Multiply by the denominator, 3, and we get 3x plus 1 equals 0. So now we're going to divide that. If I have a 3 in front of the x, can I use synthetic division? No. So we have to use long division. That's why we went over it. We will have to use it sometime. Let's do it. Divide 3x into 3x cubed. If you're not sure, go write it like 3x into 3x cubed. What is it? x squared. Multiply. We distribute. So we get 3x squared plus x squared. Subtract. It should be cute. Because okay. it makes a <laughs> And then bring it on down. And repeat. Divide 3x into nothing. You don't really need to write it, but it, you do need to distribute that and do the next step. So that's 0x squared uh, plus 0x. So subtract those. You get negative 6x. Bring it on down. Negative 2. Now what? Divide. 3x goes into negative 6x. Negative 2. Multiply. Negative 2. Negative 2. Multiply. Subtract. And we have a remainder of 0, and that's what we need. So what we have left up there is x squared minus 2. It is a quadratic, so you could complete factor, or use quadratic formula, or complete the square, 
or square roots? Like, how should we solve x squared minus 2? What should I do first? What should I do first? Add the 2. And then do what? Square root. So when I square root, what else do I have to do? And so then you have your other um, zeros, and those make factors as well. So all of our zeros are the one that was given, which was negative positive negative one third. And then plus minus square root two would, our, would be our other two zeros. And then our factors would be 30x plus 1, x minus radical 2, and x plus radical 2. And I could equal 0 to 0 to my question, how do you put the R? So you see how my zeros I can write as plus minus, but my factors have to be separate. All right, if you guys have the rest time to work on your assignment, which is the worksheet, <laughs> um, and then there's a little bit of review at the end of the worksheet to help you prepare for that quiz that's coming up this week. We don't want to just review last minute, but we'll start with um, today's assignment. So when you get it, look at the back, the last two questions, and it's going to draw one thing to your attention. Um, when you look at the back, the uh, questions on the back say, sketch the graph, fill out the information without the use of a graphing calculator. So when you look at the stuff, you're going to be finding vertex, axis symmetry, x-intercept, y-intercept, and behavior. You're going to be doing that without the calculator. If you use your calculator check, your answer fine, but like you should be able to do this without a calculator. What's that mean for our quiz that we're having? You won't be using calculator on it. So make sure that you know how to do all that. All right, you guys have the right time to work. Ask me questions if you have them. I couldn't get it. <laughs> 